You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Powerful words spoken in the Dark Knight which were a reference to the eventual fate of both Batman and Two-Face, but also ones that can be applied to pro wrestling. Oddly enough, that actually works the other way around too, but today we're going to focus on the performers who have made it into fans' hearts before that all comes pouring back out in a sea of hatred. WWE is a delicate rope to walk at the best of times, especially as your entertainment life is being controlled by someone else, and one small misstep can see it all come crashing down. And you absolutely have to change your ways too, otherwise you'll slip so far into oblivion, there may be no coming back. I'm Simon from What Culture. this is 8 exact moments WWE fans turned on popular wrestlers. Number 8, Lita. Happening on the 18th of April 2005 Raw, on paper it seemed like Lita walking down the aisle at Madison Square Garden would result in plenty of cheers. She was a babyface for one, but she was also on a crutch after suffering a nasty ACL tear. Being a good guy is about getting sympathy, it was all there, it did not happen. Instead, Lita was booed like she was the worst person to have ever entered the WWE. It was so loud and aggressive it even knocked Trish Stratus off her game who was in the ring ready to heal it up. Trish could have gone and kidnapped someone from the audience that night and even then she wouldn't have been as hated as Lita, the crowd had made up their mind. But why did this happen? Well, a week prior Matt Hardy had revealed on his website that his girlfriend had cheated on him with his best friend while he was sat at home injured. As I'm sure you know, his partner was Lita and to end the story, his best friend was Edge. So disgusted by this revelation was the WWE Universe and the fact Hardy had been fired for going public with it, they lashed out in New York and made no bones about it. The situation was terrible and Lita was going to get it and get it she did. It got so bad the company had no choice, turned a heel and teamed her up with Edge. At least then they could get through this mess together. There had been hints this was on the cards too. Seven days before there had been a smattering of booze as Lita stood next to her fake boyfriend Kane but it would take coming to MSG to draw a line under it all. Lita's fan favourite days were over and there was no going back. Number 7, Batista. Poor Batista. Not only had he walked out of WWE in 2010 because he was unhappy with his direction, but when he was moved back by the promotion, they went and screwed up his direction again. Not even Google Maps could save Big Dave from the verbal beating he was about to receive. Realizing they had to roll out the red carpet in 2014 after Batista had found so much success in Hollywood, WWE decided he could have it all. He'd win the Royal Rumble and headline WrestleMania 30. It was top guy booking enough to satisfy anyone, with one small exception. While the company was sure fans would take to this, Dave knew otherwise. He realized they'd turn on him so asked to come back as a heel, but got told no. That was ridiculous. Seemingly out of power, he accepted and then returned and got booed everywhere he went should have listened to the animal. It was even worse as it was obvious to anybody apart from WWE. The rise of Daniel Bryan was in full effect and the rules were simple. If the company wasn't focused on him, anybody else was going to get burned. Roman Reigns, Rey Mysterio, Batista, it wasn't about them, it was about how management were treating the yes man. It all came to a head at this pay-per-view for all of those reasons. As soon as it became clear that Bryan wasn't in the Rumble, everybody got it, Batista even more so because he won the thing. And if he had won it, it meant Daniel hadn't. It ruined his comeback and after a while WWE relented and turned Dave to the dark side. Wouldn't this have been better if that was the plan to begin with? Yes, yes it would, hence why in 2019 when Batista did all this again, he was the biggest asshole imaginable. At least we learned our lesson. Number 6, John Cena. By the time John Cena had reached SummerSlam 2005 and was defending his world title against Chris Jericho, fans were a bit sick of him. Transitioning from cult rap hero to mainstream star, the audience had decided he was too cookie cutter to be the top guy and therefore he should be pulled across the coals and made to feel like a right dick. So that's what we did. It did kind of make sense. Cena had started to be booked like Hulk Hogan and every underground hero who lost to him and then disappeared from the top of the card made the audience felt like it was all a big waste of time. This doubled over at SummerSlam when Jericho was also just ran over like he was some random guy because he was not. He was Y2J and that was enough. The man who can't be seen probably wished for a second that was true as the crowd panned the finish where he won again. They were sick and tired of the same old, same old. It was also where the Cena sucks chance began and that got worse when his next victim was Kurt Angle. You don't dispatch of a work-rate machine with that much ease. Oh dear, oh dear. 
Number five, Dolph Ziggler. It's fair to say that by the Royal Rumble in 2019, most fans were a little skeptical of Dolph Ziggler, or at least his booking. Too many times we'd been teased that WWE was going to pull the trigger on moving the show off to the top of the card, and yet every single time it never went anywhere. He was never given that extra nudge and nobody knew why. It was the law of diminishing returns though, as you can't keep buying into someone over and over. Fool me once, shame on me and all that. It also didn't help that Dolph had become an NXT gatekeeper of sorts, where he would feud with the latest call-up before losing. Although saying that, it's far better than what we get now, which is promote someone to the main roster and then have them vanish into dust. Smart. It all came to a head at the Rumble in 2019, where Ziggler had promised that he would definitely miss the event for the first time in years. This wasn't true as he came in at number 28, but he did so to very little response. Fans couldn't bring themselves to believe this was anything special, so they booed him instead. They were right too. Dolph disappeared after that until coming back to announce his plans at WWE Super Showdown. And that event is a whole problem in and of itself. Number 4, Roman Reigns. Another Raw Rumble catastrophe, and a year after WWE had dropped the ball with Batista, we did the exact thing with Roman Reigns in 2015. Yep, why not, eh? Because who cares? Weird thing is, back in 2014, people actually did. As it was becoming clear then that Big Dave would be the winner, fans decided they would choose Roman as their underdog. He had destroyed 12 people in that rumble already, so why not go out and at least give us a surprise? WWE didn't do this, but it must have stuck in their mind, because a year later it was Reigns taking the top spot. Boy, did that backfire. It was quite clear by that point that the big dog had been chosen as John Cena's replacement and the crowd didn't want it at all. They hissed and booed as Roman did away with Rusev to become the winner and not even The Rock could save him. Think of that. One of the most popular superstars in history who rarely makes WWE appearances made a surprise run in and that still wasn't enough. How WWE ignored that as much as they did, I will never know, but it was downhill for Reigns from this point on as the company and the fans went to war with each other. He's so crazy, I tell ya. Number three, Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. Apart from Sting, Goldberg was the last WCW star that hadn't made the jump to WWE in 2003. Deciding to see out his Turner contract, which made sense given how huge his downside guaranteed was, it wasn't until two years after World Championship Wrestling had folded until the man was brought in. When he did, it wasn't great. As all this was going on though, a young upstart known as Brock Lesnar was also making a name for himself, tearing through the WWE and winning a world championship in record time. He'd even main evented WrestleMania 19, so when Mania 20 rolled around and Vince McMahon saw he had room to make Brock vs Goldberg, he saw money and rightfully so. It'd be like two bulls kicking each other's ass. And then those problems hit. Because life is weird, it soon turned out that not only did Bill want out because of terrible mismanagement, but Lesnar had also decided to leave as he realized the pro wrestling lifestyle wasn't for him. This probably would have been fine if all this news hadn't got out to the fans. As soon as it had though, and given that this match was going down in Madison Square Garden, the whole thing imploded. Rather than put on any kind of match, both just went through the motions getting more and more mad at how the audience was treating them. There's rumors that even Shane McMahon was in attendance joining in with those, which kind of sums it up. Everybody involved wasn't happy, apart from special guest ref Stone Cold Steve Austin, who seemed bemused by it all, especially when he got to signal it off by dishing out some stunners. It wouldn't be until 2017 and their rematch where everything was sorted out, and yes, that was 13 years later. Number 2, The Rock. One of wrestling's most incredible double turns happened at WrestleMania 18 before an electric crowd in Toronto, but at no point did WWE mean this to happen just did. The story was simple. The Rock vs Hulk Hogan was a brand new hero taking on a legend of a bygone era. Hogan felt like he'd been ousted by WWE, whereas Rocky was standing tall for anyone who felt held down by the previous establishment. It was also WCW vs WWE, as well as the present vs the past. It was pretty layered. WWE itself would picture it as icon vs icon, because when the great one got the victory, he could be declared on the same level as the Hulkster. Fans would surely see it that way as well, and we could all pat ourselves on the back when all was said and done. What no one counted on would be the fact the new hero would actually be the immortal one. Almost instantly, it became clear that all the crowd wanted to do was turn back the clock to the late 80s and cheer Hulk like he was about to slam Andre. Don't get your timelines confused either. This wasn't a rock who had utterly left WWE for Hollywood, he was toying with the idea, but in 2002 he was incredibly popular. 
That wasn't true here, as he was booed out of the building. Some people even chanted die Rocky die, we turned the clock back to the wrong era. Rocky played it up by acting like the heel as Hogan sold his ass off, and when the real American hulked up, it was like the roof was about to come off the place. Obviously, the people's chant was just as beloved the next night on Raw, but on March 17, 2002, not one person wanted anything to do with him unless it was watching him get beaten up. Hulkamania ran wild. Number one, Ronda Rousey. Forget that the former UFC champ had one of the most impressive debut years ever. Forget that WrestleMania 34 match, forget that she clearly loves pro wrestling, and forget that WWE wanted to get behind her. At Survivor Series 2018, in pretty unjust circumstances, everyone just decided they didn't like Ronda Rousey as a wrestler anymore and they let her know it. It was so weird, even more so as she just starred in an awesome match against Charlotte Flair. Not even like Ronda won that clean as this was via DQ, and after the fact, the Queen lay waste to Rousey as if she'd stolen her robe. Ronda was clearly in some pain as well as the shots were laid in hard, but the LA Staples Center still rained down the booze as Rousey looked more and more confused. Welcome to the WWE Universe, and welcome to the internet. Confusion soon turned to rage as she seemed genuinely mad, I don't get what else she could have done. She'd given it her all stepping through the door, but the audience rejected her anyway. Rousey worked with it wonderfully to be fair, but in this moment, it didn't look like it was a great time to be the rowdy one. And of course, because of all of this, I blame Reddit. Know of any other exact moments WWE fans turned on popular wrestlers? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com and read yourself some articles and follow What Culture on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. My name is Simon from What Culture. I will talk to you again soon.